Hello, Leon Turner here again. The topic for today's little um, piece of video is uh, analytics. We haven't done this yet, so I'm going to be doing it today. Um, I'll try and cover off all, as many of the aspects of the analytics piece within IQ Vision as I can. It does cover quite a few bases, so this, this video may well be a bit longer than normal. To start us off, I've actually created a station already. This station has quite a few bits and pieces in it. Uh, we have some pretend FCUs, which look a bit like that. So these are simulating an FCU uh, exhibiting some kind of control. And I've put in some meters. That's a little diagram of what the meter is, is actually doing. We've got an instantaneous number here. And if I go and look at a chart, you can see that we've got some, some data going back actually a number of years, not just one year. And you can kind of see how that, that's been done. In actual fact, the meters here that I'm using are simulated meters, also built using the analytics engine, which is incredibly useful for this kind of demonstration. So I don't have to get my hands on four years worth of data to demonstrate this. The analytics engine is actually creating all this for me. Um, I'll demonstrate that at the end so that uh, you can skip over that if you're not particularly interested in that. Um, I've also put a few hierarchies together and we've got our building A, B and C um, again with exactly the same sort of information accumulated in them. There is another video on hierarchies if you want to learn how to do that. And as I said, we've got these histories which um, we're going to be using to, to operate, on the, the, the operate on this data. Now, as I mentioned, there's quite a bit to the analytics engine. It does quite a few jobs. Uh, fundamentally, we can take um, data and do some complicated maths on it. That data may come from a variety of sensors and also be treated backwards in history. So we can we can operate across a series of data and also a time range um, and come out with a single number based on crunching all that data out. That number we can feed it into wire sheet logic potentially or we can put it on a, a PX page, a graphics page if we want to sort of crunch some particular number out and show the, show people. There's also a bunch of um, graphical widgets, which are very useful, um, which we can incorporate into our, into our graphics to make data easier to understand for people. And finally, when we get to this, there's also um, uh, algorithms or um, little facilities to try and work out where equipment is working suboptimally uh, or is just plain broken or is out of um, tolerance, that sort of thing. I'll cover that last. That's the most complicated piece. So. First and foremost, I'll try and crunch a number out. That's probably the easiest way to get started into, into this analytics. Now, everything that we're going to do is tag based. So it's a prerequisite to using um, analytics that you have tags in your points as and where appropriate. Um, I have put tags on my bits and pieces here. You'll see if I edit tags, there's locations, there's the history. Um, this A colon A is uh, the analytics tag that actually turns the analytics on. Now, I put that in manually. You don't have to. There is a, a means to, to add this automatically in the background. But hopefully you can see that there's some tags here, including the location and so on. If you ever want to test any of these things to make sure you've tagged things correctly, it is very easy to just use this little search button top right to test whether the data you're going to be getting is the correct data. So I've just typed in Z colon meter, which is the, the tag I'm going to be using. And you can see I've, I've got three results, which is exactly what I'd expect. It tells me where those points are. That's a very useful little uh, checkpoint right there. So the analytics service is already installed. Um, it is down the bottom here. Now, I mentioned about this A colon A tag. If I go to the AX property sheet, you will see this auto tag analytic point is set to true. Now at the moment, if I include a point which I have tagged appropriately, that A colon A will be added automatically. However, this could be a problem if you're dealing with a limited amount of um, analytic points. My demo license here has almost unlimited or has unlimited, so I'm not gonna run out of points. The default is to leave that to false, and I would perhaps um, advise doing that. So you only tag with the A colon A stuff things you actually want to include. And it's also a, a quite a good way of precluding um, various points out, which you don't want to, to add into the, into the result. So going back to my wire sheet, um, 
in the analytics uh, palette here, you'll find there are points. And if I take a numeric point and throw it on the page, see it goes into it's stale immediately. And that's because it's not a normal numeric point. There's some special pieces about this which need sorting out. So first and foremost, I need to tell it what data I'm going to be using. Now the data is quite easy. It is oops, said colon meter. Easy. Um, I also need to tell it where I need it to look. So in this particular instance, I'm just going to look for one building, building A, and work from there down. So if I save that and poll it, it's come back with a number. Brilliant. So we're aiming at the right thing. Now, importantly, there's a lot of other things I can do here, and they're fairly common throughout the whole of the analytics piece. So roll up, interval, aggregation, totalize, and so on. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with the simplest one for us. Totalize. Is it a totalizing meter or is it not a totalizing meter? Is it a rate or is it a cumulative count? Now, the default is it's not. So I'm going to leave that because I know that my meter is a rate in this particular instance. Now, moving from the top, I could exclude some data. I'm not going to do that. I can set the time range. Now, unless I tick this box, it's going to use the default. So you can see that the default is today. What I'll do is I'll go back to yesterday and hit OK. Now, roll up, and it's important we get this, these two bits right. So roll up is over time. So I'm going to roll up my data over time and add it all together, sum it all up. The interval, I know for a fact this is a 15 minute rate, so I'm going to put 15 minutes in there. Aggregation is when you're going across several samples. So my particular example here is a building. There is one reading. If there was a bunch, I could use the aggregation to pick out um, to, to choose how to operate across those meters. So if there's three meters and I want to do the same thing as in add them all up, I would sum this as well. And then you're summing up the whole of the day for all three of those meters. But I'm not going to do that. I don't really care. I'm just going to use the first reading that comes in, which will be um, from that one meter. So if we pull that, you can see, so all of the, all of the samples yesterday add up to 358. Now, I've already got a really useful result at that point. So that is my cumulative count for yesterday um, based on the quarter hourly rate reading. If I duplicate that and do something else, if I want to add them all up, quite simple, I just go to the top of the tree. So it would be A, B and C buildings at this point. Save it and poll it again. Ah, now, because of the aggregation, look, if you see, I left it at first. So I've got the first one that came out of the result. I don't want to do that. I actually want to add them together. So now if I poll that one again, we get all three meters added together. So now I've got all of my submeters, if you like, added up and rolled up throughout the day to give me one number. Now that number, and there are lots of things you can do with this data, if I give you some examples, so um, my roll up, if you look, there's quite a list. We can average it, we can have a count. So if I go for the average, for example, rather than the sum, that number will change, obviously. And then 3.7 was the average rate throughout the 24 hours. And if I don't want to do that, I can change it to an hour. So calculate it on average on the hourly thing. And now that shouldn't change very much because it will be the same throughout the day. Some things you can roll up and it will make a vast difference to the result. So that's a way of using this to get values out into strategy. So we could write that back to implement some kind of demand led strategy, perhaps not necessarily from these meters, but these values could be anything. Um, they could be um, demand from the field. So we're aggregating out to see whether there is any demand anywhere. We can do this on binary data um, and so on and so forth. Um, very useful indeed. There's a similar process for putting things on a wire sheet. So if we go, we've got a very simple wire sheet. Uh, sorry, a very simple view here. 
so simple there's nothing on it. If I add a label and make it huge so we can see it. Now there's nothing in there at the moment, so we'll put something in just to so we can see it. Right. Now a similar process, if I add binding to that point, so we've got analytic value binding, analytic roll-up binding. We're going to choose the roll-up again. I can do exactly the same thing, really. So I can go to the config space, and I'm just going to go from the top. Um, I want metering data. I'm going to go for last year. Why not? There we go, last year. Uh, I'm going to leave the into 15 minutes because I know that's correct. Aggregation. I'm going to add them all up. Roll up. I'm going to add them all up again. And that's all I really need. So now if I animate the text. Oh, let me just OK that and go back. Animate the text. And hit OK. We should end up with an astronomically large number. So that, very simply is all three of my meters, all quarter hourly late rates, all added up for an entire year. Now that's obviously some fairly heavy duty maths going on right there. So that's, um, I mean, that goes some way to already um, depict how easy it is to use these analytics to get some fairly impressive results. So obviously that number, I can use that to display all, so all sorts of, of, of things um, on my, my graphic user interface for people. I've used metering as a result that number could be from anything, be it a temperature, a flow rate, um, absolutely anything at all. The analytics engine doesn't care where the data comes from, and it's completely agnostic as to which driver it's pulled from. Um, I'm obviously just using numeric points and so on, but this could be from any downstream driver whatsoever. It doesn't matter, or a mixture of these things. Um, and what we'll do next is go on to some of the graphical representation, the graphical widgets to put some color on the screen and to maybe display this sort of stuff a little bit better. Now we'll move on to presenting the analytics data in a slightly more visual format. And to that end, we have quite a few tools in the analytics palette which will help us, for example, use various charts and so on. So if I put my PX page into edit mode, put that out of the way for the moment and we'll start with a simple one such as the ranking chart so this will sort all my meters into their prospective places in the ranking so first and foremost uh, we get up here and we've already been given the right kind of binding to start with an analytic web roll-up binding which is exactly exactly what I want uh, I don't want to present any any other kind of uh, view although you can we don't want to do that. So what I want to do is pick up a meter. Now for the slot, I'm going to go and choose one particular source, one particular route, because I want three traces on here, ideally. Um, I'm going to leave everything as it is and see what we get. Hopefully we get a chart. Right, so this is um, today to this point in time. So it will be the ranking as they are to this point. So to put it on the trace on, I simply add another analytic roll-up binding. Make sure it's the same. Analytic web roll-up binding. Analytic roll-up binding. Wrong one. Try that again. Analytic web roll-up binding is that one I want. There we go. So exactly the same data, but from a different source. And I'll leave everything the same, everything else exactly the same. Same sort of thing, analytic web roll-up binding. So we add another one. Again, from a, a different source. So we've got all three of my meters on there now, hopefully. There we go. And that's it. I kick it into HTML5 mode to make sure it's all presented okay now obviously we've got some user based controls at the top here which will be presented in the um, in the web page for them to adjust but hopefully you can see the values change as we go through with that little control 
although unsurprisingly perhaps the order remains exactly the same. So that's a fairly simple one. You can add up to about 10 of those in the one chart. Uh, it's going to be too big a chart to display properly in half the screen. So if I change that a little bit, we'll see if we can't get it to display a bit better. Yeah, there we go. So we've popped it down to a slightly smaller size. Not brilliant, but it'll, it'll do. Uh, another one, which is fairly popular, we'll, we'll do the same sort of thing. I mean, it's going to, the, the data is going to be the same because it's effectively from exactly the same source. We don't want that. Now, what you can do is a bit of a cheat. If you want to put exactly the same data on, but in a different format, as you can see up here, there's a relative contribution UX chart type. Now, I've copied that. And this is a total cheat. I make no apologies for that. All I'm going to do is use exactly the same data and change the type on here. And lo and behold, we get a pie chart with the contribution makeup. Um, if anyone asks you how you did it, that, don't tell them. It's a secret. Uh, we'll keep that between ourselves. So there you go. And again, it's nice and interactive in the in the user view. You can turn contributors on and off to get a nice reactive view as to how those are made up. And again, you can have quite a few of those in the one chart to, to work that out. Now, some of these charts have you know more use than others. So if I hide that one or maybe make it smaller so what we'll do now is we'll add another kind of chart this is a particularly useful one, an average profile chart for clarity's sake I'll just keep this to one trace so that we can see what's going on more clearly so again we get rid of the normal binding and this one is going to be well it could be all three meters actually let's, let's do that but it'll be one trace for all three meters. So we want to get everything that's tagged up as a meter underneath that slot. And I'm going to make the time range last week. Uh, the interval, I'm not going to worry about right now. And the aggregation, we'll average them all together, although we could have the maximum, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we'll, for right now, we'll do the average of all three meters. For the roll up, I'm going to leave it as standard for the time being. So what you can see fairly crude but it's a daily profile so as you might expect it starts in the morning with very little going on and ramps up and down as you can see now that's not very fine it's got four points on it now if I want to make it a little bit more specific I change that to hourly now we get an hourly profile now what will happen is it will change it will pick the first value from every meter in the hour and then average those together. If I want to be a little bit more refined again, and you, I can use the roll up. Now this is quarter hourly data. So if I go for average on the roll up as well, hasn't made a lot of difference, but what it is now doing is the four values in every hour for every meter will be averaged. And then the three meters will also be averaged together. And that will give us that, that line there. Now, to put the same, use the same chart, but we'll add another line just because we can. So again, we want an, we want an analytic web chart binding, and it's going to be pretty much the same information, but presented differently. So meters again, all three together, and I think we had last week. So we'll do exactly the same last week. But what we'll do this time, we'll, we'll go for hourly summary again. But this time I'm going to do the maximum amount in that hour. And the roll up will also be the maximum. So it will be the highest reading meter and the highest of those four values in that hour. So we'll get a slightly different profile. So you can now see that we've got exactly the same source data but we're reading out the average here and then the maximum which follows a slightly different path now i've done that for all three meters you could obviously do that with just the one meter and in fact if we go for something else so if i get rid of my lovely pie chart we'll move this over a little bit i have to do the same trick and make it 
presentable. And this time I'm going to use exactly the same type of chart. I'm just going to present slightly different data. All right, that one doesn't like that. Let's try and make it even smaller. I don't think it's going to be. I don't think it's going to like this very much, but we'll try. Mm, it's yeah, that's acceptable. I would suggest. Sort of. So we we'll go for exactly the same kind of thing, but this time what I'm going to do is just have one trace from one meter. Sorry. We'll zoom down into one meter on both of these. And there's a reason for doing this. So what I want to do now is compare one week against another week. So we'll have exactly the same information. So it's going to be hourly average and average so we'll, we'll pick, change that one to average it all out again so they're the same and this time I want this week against last week you now you can do it day on day year on year whatever really uh, this week against last week so I'm recording this on a Friday so we'll have a few days to look at so important thing to remember on this particular bit, it's the same trace, it's the same meter, the same source data. And all we're doing now is sort of building a week-on-week a, a -week kind of comparison. And once that's in there, we can then flip it around. But you can see that gives us up to today the trace as, it, as it's building up throughout the week. If you look further through the palette, you can also see you can build tables or tabular type views. And if we go to another wire sheet, and I've got a different type of meter here just to um, try and change things a little bit. So this new meter, or this other meter, is a total type accumulative. So if you see, it basically goes up and up and up and up uh, forever, or more or less forever until it times out. So um, for that, I'll do a slightly different thing. So we have a different wire sheet, and I will use the table the web table. But the process is very similar. We've got an analytic web chart binding, same sort of thing. And we'll go for this one. Now, obviously, I've used a different meter, uh, a different tag because this one is tagged up differently, uh, but it's picked it up straight away. And if we go for uh, last week, uh, interval, we want, let's say, hourly values. There's only one value coming in, so I won't bother with the aggregation. And the roll-up will use the maximum in that one hour. Uh, sorry, now what we'll do is we'll do the range. So what that should do is basically tell us the difference in every hour. So now, now we've, what we've basically got is an hourly rate, hour to hour. Now, obviously, I can change that as I see fit. So if we go, for example, for uh, last month and change the interval to daily, what we'll end up with is a daily total. Now, that's obviously calculated out from the start of the day to the end of the day and it's the difference between the two so that is the range part so now we've got a daily summation of how we are going day to day throughout our our month energy use so that is how we can easily deal with meters that are totally different in output to the the rate ones we've been looking at so far and um, again we can adjust any one of those parameters to get exactly what we want be that an hourly usage from yesterday uh, hour on hour or 15 minute or we can as i say we can even turn it into a 15 minute rate from this cumulative total very simply and as with the most of these things i can quickly adjust that on the little user controls up here and possibly even more useful actually take it out as a, a csv file straight away and turn it into something usable outside the station, potentially. So what we'll do now is we'll go on to a slightly different view in the services. This is designed so that uh, users, actual users of the system, can perhaps create their own reports as they go. And there's a view, this folder here, the reports folder. <clears throat> there's one already existing. We'll, we'll delete that and we'll start again. 
So we'll just go ahead and create a brand new report. Uh, what we'll go for is a spectrum chart, uh, also called a heat map, depending on who you talk to. And this is the one we'll demonstrate for now. So we'll go for something different. Um, we'll use our same old meter, so meter one in here. Uh, the data is not that, it is Z colon meter. Now I'm going to do something slightly different. We'll go for the previous, and this is quite configurable here. Uh, not hours. We'll go for a fortnightly view, previous two weeks. And I'm going to change the color scheme ever so slightly. Make the scale a bit easier to see. So uh, low numbers will be yellow, high average numbers will be orange, and bigger numbers will be red. And if we hit run. Right. So here we can see what this looks like. So you can see the higher intensity energy usage will come in as red, uh, medium, orange, and scale down to yellow where it's um, low. Now, hopefully what you can see is here, and I've tried to make this as obvious as possible. I won't pretend otherwise. But there is an aberration here. There's a very, very high usage outside the normal time we'd be expecting to see it. So we've got weekends here, five days in the middle, and that is in the middle of the night. So that allows us to basically zoom in and find patterns of abnormal usage so that we can identify when something has happened. It's then a, a case of finding out why after the fact. Something that energy managers uh, use occasionally at all, but they, they do rely on from time to time. So there are quite a few of these sort of reports available in that view, uh, and people can set them up in the web uh, as and when they like. In the interest of keeping this video to some reasonable kind of length that you have a reasonable chance of getting through without falling asleep, I'm going to cut it off there. Uh, so we'll call this part one. And I'll come back and do uh, another video on the al algorithm side, the, the actual um, analytics, as most people seem to think of it, uh, in a, at a slightly later date. So thank you very much for now, and I'll see you in part two. Bye-bye.